All right, so just got done with uh, cleaning up the cylinders, heads, and the ports here. Uh, the coolant ports, I did a little lapping on these heads as well. So uh, they turned out pretty good. I think I'm going to make this a regular practice. So probably end up going through all my sleds eventually and doing that. Um, I ended up lapping this a little bit. There are, there's a little bit of pitting here, but it should be fine. Um, see if you guys can. Yeah, got a nice cross hatch in there. Looks pretty good. And I wanted to make a comment on um, something. I should have got a little bit of video of it. But you can see the clear cross hatching in there. And it's supposed to be uh, like 60 degrees. And I've heard people say, oh, when I put my top end in, all I needed to do was just take a little scuffing pad to deglaze it. Well, you know, I tried doing that. And it wasn't happening. So, um, yeah, if you're, if you're, you know, putting a new top in or even just putting new rings and your pistons are fine, uh, yeah, you definitely should do a quick aluminum oxide ball hone. Um, the manual only calls for like 10 passes, which is down and back. So it happens pretty quick you don't have to do a whole lot but it's definitely worth it um, you're getting a lot better uh, seal once you re-ring it because you're putting a point to each one of those cross hatches you're putting a point okay so what happens is is what each one of those cross hatches has a point to it so what will happen is when it you know there's like a like a valley you got a point a peak and then a valley so what happens is, is when the rings start going up and down there, it starts wearing down on that, and you get a good seal. So if those are already worn down, they're not going to, even if you do have some crosshatch in there, if you put new rings in, those rings aren't going to wear properly to those rounded uh, crosshatching scratches. And granted, it'll hold oil, but you know you're not going to get as good of a seal and probably not as good a compression. So you're better off just running a few passes with the aluminum oxide ball hone. I use the flex hones, and they've done me right. So, and then I use just your standard automatic transmission fluid because that's like a cleaning agent as well. So. Did that, and then uh, also ran, did some lapping on the coolant ports here. Anyway, it turned out pretty good. And then I was able to get the ends of this as well. And then I also rigged up a 2x4 with a piece of glass on top of it that top of it that uh, I was able to straddle with this and then alternate directions so that's where I'm at next step is to sandblast this stuff well I'm gonna tape it up first tape off because I'm just gonna use the blue painters tape for sandblasting so I did last time worked out pretty well and then take the tape off uh, heat it up and get all the impurities out and then uh, Take it out again, and I'll let it cool down, tape it all off with the heat tape, powder coat it, and then pop it in the oven. And we'll be done with that part. So, so I just got done sandblasting all this stuff. And now I'm just going to outgas it once I take all this tape off. And then let it cool. And then I'm going to powder coated after that so it's moving along 
Well, I gotta tape it up first, so, so I gotta do this all over again, which is very tedious. But the end product is awesome. All right, guys, just got done taping up the cylinders, heads, and coolant ports here. This is the high temp paint. Um, this is pre-powder coating. So what I'm going to do next is go ahead and hit these with some powder and toss them in the oven. So um, everything's looking pretty good so far. Uh, I finished these up actually last night and outgassed them and then figured, you know what? I'm kind of done for the night because it was about 10 o'clock, so a little before 10 o'clock, I guess. So anyways, uh, yeah, I'll get these in the uh, powder coating station, and then I will go ahead and powder coat them and bring them back. Not bad. It's interesting because this orange has a slightly different color when it comes out fresh out of the oven. But then when it cools, it starts looking more vibrant. All right, guys, we are back from the oven. So I've given these a chance to all cool down. I'm going to start taking off tape. It's funny because a lot of this stuff will start peeling as it cools down. And we started, started getting flurries today. It's a big storm that went by. Well, what is up with this year? <laughs> Definitely going to be able to gauge next year as far as weather. Look at that. I just pop that rubber right in there. I'll do what? There's another one being a booger. Look at that. That's awesome.
taking it off is way <laughs> better than putting it on, I'll tell you that. My gosh, it took me like a couple hours just to put all the tape on. Maybe an hour and a half, I don't know. Wasn't really paying attention, I was just focusing on getting it done. You look at the clock, it's gonna go slower. Stay focused, get, get the work done. And get to go. Seen videos of, of the manufacturer, like there's an Arctic Cat video going around about the manufacturing process. And looks like they just hang the parts and spray them. They don't tape anything off. And I have noticed that even on mating surfaces, at least not with uh, this stuff, not with heads and stuff, but you know, silly things like this, there's paint. There's a paint coating on this on all these surfaces. There was paint on this side. All right, let's do one. So it's obviously not that big of a deal. Like opening up presents. It's exciting. The things we get excited about as adults. My kids just look at me like, what's the matter with him? One day they'll understand. At least it's cold outside. Just needs to stay cold. Last year we had all these stinking like warm ups. So there ended up being like a bunch of puddles everywhere. Well, puddles and then they would freeze and so you get ice patches I don't, I don't like to run studs on my tracks I don't lake race or anything like that I've never had a you know since uh since I've been on the trails I've never had a problem it's the third <laughs> third year yeah I'm a rookie I know I was kind of sheltered as a kid my parents I don't know if I'd say shelter, but my parents just weren't active. They didn't like to do a whole lot. They were busy working and come home and want to chill out. So I think I'm starting a new a new chapter, so to speak, in our lineages. Because, you know, I mean, there's only me and that I know of only a couple people in our family well a few it's um, my mom's fraternal twin twin it's his boys or his uh, his kids they like to have fun and do active, be active like that so my cousins so so there's not really whole, you know a whole lot of people in my family that like to. My uncle, my dad's brother, he um he's active like that. And actually, yeah, their sister. She's I remember going down because she she moved to Tennessee a while back and a long time ago, and we would go visit them in Tennessee. In the summer, for quite a few years when I was younger, and my cousins would, they always, you know, they had four wheelers and stuff. And me and my cousin, Greg, we would always go mudding on the four wheeler. They only had one, so we would just, you know, I'd ride shotgun on the back and <laughs> we'd zoom down to the creek or we'd go across the field and, you know, screw around in the creek on the, the quad. Or we'd uh, we just go out into the field where it was muddy and get dirty. It was fun. So yeah, there's a limited amount of people, but it just happened. I never went. You know, I never hung out with my my cousin on my mom's side doing that kind of stuff. He's a few years older than me, so when I saw that he had that stuff, he, we were living together at the time, and. Uh, Yeah, it was pretty pretty cool to see that stuff, but it just never crossed my mind to start getting into it. He didn't like invite me with him or anything. Which, you know, not a big deal or anything. It's just something that he and his buddies did. 
And uh, yeah, like I told you in that last video, how I got my, my first sled, it's just how it happened. Everything happens for a reason. So, but it's fun, as you guys know. And then this is this is just something else that you know I've always had this passion of restoring and making things look good and new or whatever. And so that just kind of goes hand in hand. When you got machines, especially the used ones, you know, because people just beat on them. They just run them into the ground. You gotta take care of these things. You gotta take care of them. They just deteriorate. It's like second law of thermodynamics. Entropy is what's implied. Things just deteriorate. Because energy left to itself does not create order, it creates chaos. And destruction. You ever seen a downed electrical wire? <laughs> Exhibit A. <laughs> So that's it. The heads are done. Cylinders. That's them. All right, guys, now that the heads are done, I uh, already pretty much finished up one here. Uh, this is how, if I've had people ask me how I get the the finish back on the top of the heads there. Um, it's pretty simple. I just take a sandy block, some 220, just be careful. If you want to uh, go like alternate directions, I'm sure there's a lot of guys, a lot of you guys know this, but uh, you know for the people that don't, if you're sanding this way, you have like lines like this from the scratching off of material. So if you go perpendicular to those lines, it'll take those lines off pretty quick, and you'll grab a lot more material. To the original way. There you go. Didn't get all of them, all of them out, but you know. Looks pretty good. So that's all you do that. All right, so just figured I'd show you guys that. Had people ask before how it's done. That's the way I do it. All right, guys. I am working on the cases. So these cases for the, 800, the ZR800 I got from Eric. I'm mean, sorry, Keith, yeah, Eric Keith Loudermilk. A West Michigan snowmobile, okay, and uh, they actually are really nice, so I wouldn't expect any less coming from them. So that's really what I'm doing. I'm just going through these and getting everything off. They already got a, a real good bath, so this is just to clean up the the mating surfaces. I called Arctic Cat and Country Cat, and they both said that um 
they use. I mean, they named they named a Loctite, but I looked it up, and it's the exact same thing as uh, Ultra Black. So that's what I use. And then uh, cat technicians are trained that when they put the silicone on, I mean, you can use 518 as well, but I mean, 518... I mean, as far as I'm concerned, 518 is for someone that's going to be taking their cases apart, you know, regularly, I would think. I mean, it seems like that's what the, the race engine builders, that's what they use. But Cat uses the Ultra Black, so I'm just going to go that route. It's Cat. So, um, so once I get all these cleaned up, I actually got the bottom half cleaned up. And I ended up going with, I didn't powder coat them. I went with uh, the stuff by VHT. And it, it handles up to 250 degrees. And higher than that with uh, short intervals. So I've used it on other stuff that gets real hot. Uh, engine parts and stuff like that. And it does really well. So that's what I'm going with for the cases. So I'm going to do black on the cases. And then uh, I'm going to do orange. Because there's not a whole lot of orange on the sled. There is in the decals. So I'm kind of bringing that accent out in the suspension. And then it'll come out in the engine. The orange, the orange turned out sweet. Uh, it's going to be powder coat. Uh, it's it's the number is RAL R-E-L 2004 and I did that on my wife's my wife's 580 cylinders and heads and it turned out pretty sweet looking you guys saw it it's on the channel so yeah I'm going with that I think it'll look pretty sweet once it's done with all the accents and stuff It's got so much grime on, not grime, but silicone really sticks. There's that. Normally when I'm working, I don't really talk a whole lot, but just because I'm focused on what I'm doing, if I got other people around me, you know. But making a video, try to stay talking. Ooh, there we go, that looks good. I'm trying. I'm trying. I've been I've been told that I don't know. I kind of seem like I'm irritated at people, and I'm like, no, I'm just why? I asked why, and they said because I'm not talking at all, and I'm like, no, I'm just focused. So just stay focused. And if I don't have anybody else around and I'm making a video like this. I've gotten kind of used to talking during the video. And there was one video I made last year. I was quiet and I was just showing different angles of these plugs because I wanted to get some opinions of people. And one guy responded. I can't remember who it was. But he goes, for the love of God, say something. <laughs> so from that point, I've tried to make it a point. That from the time that I got to saw that comment, I've tried to make it a point to... Keep talking. You know, some people don't get bored. Let me know what you, you know. Let me know what you guys think. If you think I talk too much, let me know. If you think I don't talk too much, or don't talk as enough, or <sighs> go from there. It's all cleaning up. Just cleaning up. Just gotta keep at it. Alright, I'll finish this up. Alright guys. Got that other one done. It's soaking. Clean off the old gloves. I already did this one. 
All right, let's bring the, uh, the bottom over. That's it. Turned out pretty good. This stuff's real nice. It's a single stage epoxy. It takes uh, 48 hours to cure. It's salt and rust resistant. Um, it's highly chemical resistant as well. So, um, yeah, it's good stuff. I've used it on a bunch of different things. So. I love the high contrast of the black paint and the aluminum. Any metal, really. Look at that stinking thing. It's coming off. Going in the garbage. Screw those, take them both off. Focus. I think I did this last year with my 700 and I never posted the video. But I did it with the heads. Gosh, what was that? Duplicolor? Was it Duplicolor? Grab or green? Maybe? And it doesn't look any... <clears throat> the actual ending color looks just like Arctic Cat green. <clears throat> the year I was going for is like ZR2, ZR3. Turned out awesome. Doesn't look anything like the lid on it. I did it in coats, just like it said, and I tried to heat cycle it. You know, I just let it go with the engine. And still, for some reason, I got a couple little, like, tiny, tiny, like, chips. Like, where paint, like, popped. I don't know, like, it popped off some for some reason. Whatever. I'm not doing it again. I'm not using paint, engine paint anymore. Because the engines, they only get up to a little over 200 degrees at the exhaust, even, when you're just chilling. You know, so um, the powder coating withstands 250 degrees and it can withstand, that's like continuous and it can withstand shots of like 350 to 375 is what the guys at the powder coating shop that I get my stuff from said. And so, uh, yeah. I put it on my wife's 580 cylinders and turned out perfect. No chipping, nothing. Here, you guys gotta watch this. Look at the brass. That just looks awesome. It does. That's sweet. I don't know if you guys appreciate that as much as I do, but it looks awesome. That's what's going down in Crocatown. This is all the rewarding part to me. The rewarding part. Oh. Pretty. <laughs> I was blind, but now I see the light. So that's it. There's going to be a couple spots that I have to clean off. Not a big deal, though. Oh, wasn't as bad as I thought, so. Top half's going to look the same way. I will be back to show you the rest. All right, guys. So I got the top and bottom of the cases finished. So I'm pretty excited here. We got the, I've refinished the water pump as well. Nothing crazy. Uh, just hit it with a fresh coat of the VHT single stage uh, semi-gloss black. And did that like I did that, uh, like obviously I did that for both the top and the bottom here. So, uh, the next step is I'm going to be putting in the water pump and the oil pump and then putting the seals in there, mechanical and the oil seal. 
and engine assembly is going to start. So I'm pretty excited about that. So that's it for this portion of the series as far as refinishing the case and all the parts and you know, all the cylinders and heads and um, the ports, the coolant ports. Um, I did the APV valves. Those turned out pretty good too. I'm uh, just going to keep those black. I uh, did a bunch of lapping on parts. So... Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I tried to make it a little bit um, shorter by piecing stuff together, not making them as long and talking as much. So, all right. Um, yeah, if you guys are interested in the, the content you like, then go ahead and subscribe, hit the alert button, um, share with your family and friends on social networking, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, go ahead and comment. You know, if you got any questions about what I'm doing, feel free to ask. I'll do my best to answer the questions with the knowledge that I have. And if not, I'll find the answer for you. And like the video. And like I said, you know, I appreciate you guys, uh, you know, supporting the channel and, and coming back and viewing regularly. So, you all come back.